Yo guys, what's going on? Blossom is back and welcome back to another episode of Sab Drives. Now, the next prize car is out as you can see right here. It is indeed the ME412 qualifiers, or should I say, the next prize car is the ME412. And as you can see, the qualifiers are out and so are the prelims. I'm going to show you what the prizes are and we're going to discuss what the requirements are going to be. So obviously, if you don't know what the ME412 is, it is indeed a Chrysler. And as you can see, I've already joined uh, 26 and 10. I don't think I'll stay first. I definitely do not have the strongest hand here. It's definitely top 10, but I definitely don't have the strongest hand. Let me just show you what I'm running so far. So I'm running the Acura NSX and my almost maxed out 410. Let me know down in the comments below if I should just finish it off. I really want to finish this because it's really annoying me that's only one fuse away. Uh, but the main problem uh, to why I don't want to max it out is because it's RQ80. You never know when it's going to drop to an epic. And if it drops to an epic, oh my god, I, that will be a sad day for me. Um, but anyway, those are the two legendaries I'm using. I'm also using the 211 Supercharged, and the last two cars I'm using are, I believe, to be Acuras. Uh, the first one is the ZDX, and the final car in my hand is a Lotus, actually. It's a Lotus Elan. Where is it? 35RQ. So this is the hand that I'm using. Initially, I know what you're thinking. Blossom, you have the standard tire Volvo. Wouldn't you think that's better, considering that the qualifiers is all rain? Yeah, that's what I thought as well. I was initially using the S80 V8, because I thought this was going to be a perfect car for this event, right? It's four-wheel drive and it's standard tires, but no! Um, first of all, there are a minimum of two drags in this, so, so because of that, I'm using the NSX and the Evora 410. Um, and then the next thing is, the 211 Supercharge actually beats uh, the Volvo S80 on the third track, which is kind of like a hybrid track. So, you know, for example, uh, what is it? Runway Loop? This loses to the 211. And even Ocean... Ocean Parking? Something like that? It's like, no, no, Ocean Highway. Ocean Highway. Uh, this loses, which was a huge surprise to me. So, uh, eventually I was like, you know what? I give up. I took it out of my hand and I replaced it with the 211 Supercharge, which leaves me with one RQ to work with. It would have been better, I think, if I had the at least Cup 250 maxed, but I don't. So, we are staying with the 211 Supercharge. But anyway, the next prize car is indeed the Chrysler ME412. None of us got it right uh, in the after hours. At least the guys that could speak, including myself. Uh, but let's look at the prize cars real quick. So let's see, 2007, 2007, 2007, 2007, 2007, 2007, yeah, it's, it's, it's obvious. It's, it's obvious, but not too obvious, because a lot of people started thinking, oh, what if it's just 2007 German and uh, American? That's not the case, because I'm going to show you the prelim prizes right now. And let's look at the prelim prizes. As you can see, we can win an Aston Martin V8 N400, which is British, so it's not German, it's not the US, but the one pattern that stays in the qualifiers and the prelims are that every single car given out is 2007, but that isn't the sole requirement. In fact, we've never seen this before, but Hutch has actually gone out and already admitted, or not admitted, but they have already told us what the final requirement is gonna be. So usually this is the video where I tell you what the next prize car is, and then we start speculating what the next requirements are. And 99% of the time, I'm right. Actually, 100% of the time, when I've made a video like this, I've been correct with the final requirements before the qualifiers end. Um, but I say 99% because every time I make the assumption, I always, you know, I always say, is 99% going to be this, or is 99% going to be that? But 100% of the time, what I have said has turned out to be true. That being said, though, no predictions today, because I'm going to put a picture right here. Robin has already confirmed it. Chrysler ME412 Tri-Series Replay Criteria. A note that the criteria for these Tri-Series finals are 2,000 petrol or diesel only. I think that's pretty interesting, the way he says it that way, uh, petrol or diesel only. I feel like it should be petrol and diesel only. Can you imagine if you had a choice of using 2007 petrols only or 2007 diesels only? I don't even know what the 2007 diesels look like. Um, but as you can see in the second paragraph, we don't usually confirm criteria ahead of the event itself. Well, you don't do that, but your packs basically confirm it anyway when the qualifiers end, but we're getting a confirmation even earlier than the qualifiers ending. So we don't usually confirm criteria ahead of the event itself, but as criteria are more likely to be modified compared to criteria of the past, you can infer 
what the, what the restrictions are as easily in advance. As such, uh, if there are any other updates to the criteria before the finals begins, I will add information here too. Basically, what he's saying is that for now, Hutch is planning the final to be 2007 petrol and or diesel. Um, why that is significant is because there is one specific car that is yeeted out of the uh, selection pool when petrol and diesel are the only two that you can select. So, oh, and also the second paragraph, what Robin said there in the picture is basically, you know, it's still subject to change. It might change. This might not be set in stone, but usually most of the time, it is set in stone. So we can say once again with 99% confidence that the final requirements, or at least confirmed by Hutch, is 2007 petrol or diesel, or I should say petrol and diesel. Uh, so let's check it out. So if we go into years and we just select 2000, I'm, I swear to God, man, they're just gonna go through every single 2000 year in 2021 for a final. I mean, we've already had what? 2009, 2001, and now it's 2007. And then we've also had 2006. So we're, we're kind of really just working on the ranks. What's next? 2003, four? We had a four. Um, so 2003, five, eight, I think. So yeah, that's gonna be pretty interesting. But here we go, 2007, and we're gonna go into all cars. And let's look at what we have. So there are only really four cars that are going to be yeeted when you put the new tag on. So let me just do that. Um, go to collections and tags and select non-price cars. And then what we wanna do is look for petrol and diesel. I think it's miscellaneous, I might be wrong. Uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, actually, let me show you one of the cars that are yeeted because these are the ones. So these are the 2007 cars that we can't use. The Koenigsegg CC. XR, the Mazda Furai, the Mitsubishi, and the Honda Jazz. The Mitsubishi and the Honda, I don't think anybody is going to be sad that those cars are omitted. But here's the big one, the Furai. You can't use the Furai in the final. And a lot of people have already been a little, you know, I've seen some complaints about this already. But guys, let's be honest. We saw this coming. You know, I made this video a while ago. I think it was last week where I was predicting final requirements for the future. And it's funny, I predicted 2005, but I didn't predict 2007. Uh, but yeah, I predict, but um, what I said in that video is that Hodge doesn't like to use really popular cars. So we should have seen this coming. The Furai is a really popular car. A lot of players have this max, but on top of that, the Furai is one of the most common epics in the game. Now I know what you're thinking, how is that possible? All epics are random when you pull them from a pack. Yes, that is true, but the Furai is still the most common epic in the game game are one of the most common epics in the game because not many epics in top drives has a pack dedicated dedicated to them where the pack pool rate if that makes sense is a hundred percent what i'm saying here is the mazda carbon fiber because if you've opened a Mazda Carbon Fiber and you've gotten an Epic, you have gotten the Furai. It's a 100% chance of getting the Furai if you pull an Epic from the Carbon Fiber. When you think about it, a Carbon Fiber, a chance of pulling an Epic is I think 11 to 14%, something like that. So if you hit that 11% or 14% chance or whatever it is in between, you are getting a 100% chance of unpacking the Furai from a Mazda CF. And because of that, a lot of people have tried to open Mazda CFs and because of that, those that have gotten lucky have gotten the Furai and they've most likely had it maxed. Um, so yeah, it's one of the most common epics in the game and it makes sense that Hutch wants to yeet it out because obviously if you can't use it means, you know, that's one less car in your starting hand. And if you have one less car in your starting hand, that increases the chances that you have a weaker hand and you need to buy packs for the final. It's just good business, guys. Uh, but then last, the next one is the Kenexx CCXR. This car is also being yeeted because it has like bioethanol or whatever it is. And I kind of make, I'm kind of sad that I can't use it, you know, Blitzig. But I also, you know, I can see why I can't use it. You know, this was useful in, in the shadows already. It had its day, right? So let's look at the cars that we can use then. So let's get rid of hybrid, electric, and other fuels, and let's select. Um, petrol and diesel, or gas and diesel, because, you know, I'm American. Uh, but yeah, gas, diesel, these are the cars that we can basically use. Zonda R is the best of the bunch. Uh, Raventa, Napolo, Basic. Now, I'm guessing that the final track sets are going to be a mixture of wet and dry, with an emphasis on wet. So I'm saying majority wet, so three wet, two dry. Why I'm saying that is because the Zonda and the Apollo have been useful before, in the same reason on how the Koenigsegg CCXR has been useful. 
cool. You know, it's a special tag. I think, what was it? Riders of the Storm and Riders of the Valkyries, right? The Apollo was Riders of the Valkyries, Zonda was Riders of the, Riders of the Storm. I, I think that was the case. I guess you can make an argument where these cards can be a little bit more useful because those tags are older than in the shadows. So, you know, those cards were key a longer time ago. So, you know, I guess you can say it's they can't there's a higher chance of them being recycled, you know, um, but I, I can definitely see that they'll find a way to emit the Zonda R. Kind of like how the Volkswagen TCR was yeeted out of the, uh, what was it, Pagani 760 RS final? Like, you could use one, but, you know, the rest it was like four rain, one dry. It's the same thing with the Banana as well in the 2000, I think 2009 final for the Porsche GT1. You, yeah, you could unpack the Banana, but you couldn't use it anywhere because the entire final was wet. So I think they're gonna do something similar over here. Maybe like four wet, one dry, three wet, one dry. Majority wet, that's what I wanna say. Uh, because that would also make key cars like the Reventon. The Reventon hasn't been a useful car in any final yet. Um, other four wheel drive cars would be the Lancer Evo 8. Um, this one's actually, you know, not a lot of people have used this yet because everyone has the Evo 10, everyone has the Evo 10 Max because of the 2009 final, but the Evo 8, well, you know, I don't think a lot of people have really, I've never used this in a Tri-Series. I've had this car since 2017. This is one of my oldest epics. I think this is like the first epic I've actually pulled and kept um, back in 2017, and it's one of my oldest cars, and I've never really had a Tri-Series where this was useful, so hopefully now it's the time for it to shine. Um, but yeah, as you can see, there, it's, it's it's looking like a pretty good pack. I'll do a, a, a separate pack review in the future, but it's looking like a pretty good pack. So yeah, these this is the cards that I have currently. Gumpert, Raventon, CTR3, Merchilago. I would have had five legends if it wasn't for the uh, CCXR having bioethanol, but I still think I have a pretty good hand. If there's any rain, I already have two of these Evo 8s, and I would be happy to max them because these two cars are actually fantastic. Let me just show you how old this thing is. It is 1,266 days old. I've raced it over 7,000 times and has a win ratio of 88%. This thing is truly a gem, one of the oldest cars in my garage. But yeah, there you go. What do you think? The final requirements 2,000 petrol to diesel. How's your hand looking like? Let me know down in the comments below. Before I end up the video, I just want to do something kind of new, something I've never done before. I want to talk a little bit about the prize car uh, in, in a way that you've never seen before. So let's find the ME412 first. If we go into country and select the USA and go into all cars, let's select the ME412. I'm going to give you a little bit of a history lesson about this car. So y'all ready for this? Buckle up! The Chrysler ME412. Here's a little bit about the Chrysler ME412. It's Chrysler's mid-engine rear-wheel drive concept car, and it debuted in 2004 in the North American Auto Show in Detroit. That was the first time people ever laid their eyes on it, or at least the public ever laid their eyes on it, 2004. And this was Chrysler's first ever supercar. Ah! And you know, it's mid-engine and all that kind of stuff. So ME412, what does that mean? Why is the name so long? Well, first of all, Chrysler is Chrysler, like how Dodge is Dodge and Mercedes is Mercedes, okay? But ME412, what does that mean? ME stands for mid-engine. Uh, 4 stands for the four turbochargers that is in this machine. And the 12, I'm pretty sure you can guess that it's, it's a V12. It's a 12-cylinder engine that produces 800 horsepower. Um, and it's also, the engine is made by Mercedes-Benz. That makes sense because um, when the Chrysler ME412 was, uh, when, it, when it debuted at the Detroit Auto Show, it was owned on, under Mercedes at the time. This stayed a concept car. It never became uh, a production car where people could buy, but if that was the case, it would have at least cost a minimum of 250,000 US dollars. That was the minimum. Uh, they said that it would have ranged, the price would have ranged from 2, 000, uh, 250,000 uh, US dollars to 750,000 US dollars. It's a huge margin, you know, but if we just go on the low end, it's gonna be at least 250,000 US dollars. And that was the main reason why this car never came into production because uh, Daimler Chrysler just felt that, you know what? Who would spend a quarter of a million dollars on a Chrysler? That made sense, especially at the time when there were other supercars like the Ford GT and the Ferrari Enzo and the Pagani Zonda. The thing was, the Chrysler ME412 was faster than the Ford GT and faster than the Ferrari Enzo. Um, but at the end of the day, Daimler said, no, we're not going to send this into production because at the end of the day, nobody is going to buy a Chrysler for $250,000. 
That's what they wanted the public to think at least. Although that may have been a factor, there was another thing why Mercedes wanted to shut this car down. And that was because at the same time of the Chrysler ME412, Mercedes had their SLR Mercedes McLaren. And here was the thing. The SLR Mercedes McLaren was Mercedes' gem at the time. It was their baby. It was their flagship and they were proud of it. And here comes Chrysler making a car that outperformed it. It had a higher top speed than the SLR. It had a lower zero to 60 than the SLR. And at least according to top drives, it has about the same handling to an SLR. So if we were talking about a straight line, the Chrysler ME412 was better than Mercedes' golden boy at the time. And since Mercedes owned the Chrysler, they didn't want that to happen. Oh no, no, no. You're telling me that your car is better than my car? We don't want that to happen, you know? So there were really two main reasons to that. First of all, you know, it's a valid point. Who would spend a quarter of a million dollars on a Chrysler concept or a Chrysler, right? But also, I think the bigger reason was because Mercedes, the, the bigger reason to why Mercedes shut it down was because they didn't want a car that would overshadow their baby SLR Mercedes McLaren. Anyway, that is a little crash course, I guess, of the Chrysler ME412. Let me know what you think. In my opinion, at the end of the day, this really wasn't a poster car for me growing up. Although it was in that time, I would have been four years old at the time uh, when this car was out. But it never really was a poster car for me. I never liked how it looked. Um, and I don't like the back of the ME412 either. I, I just don't think it looks like a good car. And I'm not a fan of it. That being said, in terms of this being a prize car, you know, in terms of a car and top drives, it's not that special i mean it's like the best american car for the test bowl i guess and that's about it but anyway let me know what you think in the comments below let me know what your hand is looking like and if you guys are prepared anyway hope you guys have a great day i'm gonna stay safe wash your hands and blossom out peace Bring the toast in the back and we going berserk with the guns on the rack and we taking it count to the sound of the crack Running from us with the pop and the Cause we making the moves and the sound of the pee Calling the shots if it's looking at me and we taking it count to the flow in the back with the drop and the cash You know this ain't a prank Moving like water, talking with fire I'm back on the cover to mama's design Keep riding the flames like a man on a mission Rejected again but you better go listen Pop up at Billy, run out the Billy My face on the boards and you all gonna see me I woke my wrist to look dicey as Yachty Flex in the club, trying to seriously Louie Hey. Yeah.